Welcome to this year's Continuous Professional Development Workshop being organized by PALI, Passionate Africa Leadership Institute Workshop. I am a professional banker. I'm also a career counselor and a corporate trainer. And I also do workshop facilitation. I have done this for well over 20 to 25 years. Then we are now going into formats. The various application formats for reflective practice. And therefore, this is the core thing for this session. And so, if we are ready, let us go. The general stages, and as we said, there are different, different, different uh, types. So you have to adopt based on your particular situation, your particular area of work, what exactly you are working on at any point in time. You know. You know. So this is another a variation where you say what went well ask yourself this operation that we did this community health health service that we undertook this physiotherapy that you know uh, we, 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 we just did this eye um, surgery that we just did this complicated dental uh, process that we're part of the team this anesthetic process that the patient almost uh, died what went well what could be improved what situations make poor service more likely ask yourself are there any barriers to providing good service in what we do? These are the questions. What support do I need to overcome those barriers? And at the end, how does all this improve my practice? Let's look at another one. What went well? What could be better? How did my skills improve? How does this impact on my practice? This reflection, this reflection, this reflection, what went well? What could be better? What didn't go on well? How did my skills improve? How can my skills improve? If it's reflection, anticipatory reflection, how can my skills in, 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 improve? How does this impact on my practice? These are the questions. So this is another model. Let's look at other, other, other variations. So there's a popular one which is called Gibbs Reflective Cycle. So if you are ready, let's look at a specific, you know, reflective cycle or practice. So Gibbs reflective cycle is a process for guiding reflective practice and it has a number of distinct steps in a, a certain order. So what are these? The first one, description. Describe what happened, the situation. And don't forget that we've had a practice assignment where we said put down two instances or cases or situations. One positive, one challenging. I hope you did that. So that is there. So you can build on that by 
looking at Gibbs reflective cycle. He says, describe what happened without any judgment. Just describe practice physically what happened. At this stage, no judgment. We are not saying analyze. You know, you can ask yourself, where you where was I? Where you where was I? Who else was present? So we are just describing what was there. I was at the at the at the operation table, you know, with a, a team made up of a doctor and aesthetic. That, and then what happened? The patient started losing blood. So just a description of what happened is number one. Then you can move on according to Gibbs model. You can move on to the feelings. How did you feel? And this one, when you say, how did you feel? Don't forget, it means you are doing it from the, from the lens of yourself. If you are doing it from the lens of the patient, in this same thing, you'll be asking, how did the patient feel? How did my organization feel? How did my team feel? From different lenses. So you have to be very clear which lens you are documenting your reflective practice at that moment. So this one is from self. How did I feel? Describe how you felt. What was I thinking? Now, how am I feeling now? Again, just describe the feelings. No analysis, no judgment. Don't say, I was feeling sad because of that. Just state, I was feeling sad. I was feeling happy. So your description of the, of the situation, description of the incident, then the feeling. Then you can now move on to the analysis or what we call evaluation. So according to Gibbs, describe the, then your feelings and then evaluation. Evaluate everything at that stage. You know, think, analyze, you know, why did it happen? What happened? Everything that happened. Ask yourself, what went well? What went badly? And why? Evaluate at that point. So description, feeling, evaluation. Okay, all right, so this is Gibbs reflective cycle. Description, feelings, evaluations. We'll look at analysis after that, conclusion, and then action plan. So we'll come back to this. So let's continue, you know, so we have analysis. After the evaluation, then you now analyze the situation. Try to make sense of everything that happened. You know, what was the reason? You can ask yourself, why did, did the things go that way? Why did they go well? Why didn't they go well? Why did I act this way? I'm saying again that this will be from the lens of self. But if it's from the lens of of patient, you ask, why did the patient act, act that way? Why did it happen? Why was he losing blood? Why was the, the artificial leg not fitting? You analyze. Then you draw the next step, conclusion. Now you draw your conclusion based on the information that you have generated so far. So you start with your general conclusions and then move to specific ones that pertain to your particular situation. Example, you can start with general conclusions about how the people act in certain situations and then you can move to specifically what happened. Oh, it was because we used plastic instead of wooden. It was because the wooden was not retrofitted, etc., etc. So that is the conclusion. After the conclusion, that is not the end. Then the most important part, the action. Now all this is, you've gathered information, you've done the description, 
You've done the feeling, you've done the evaluation, you've analyzed, you've brought the conclusions or you've drawn the conclusions. Then you now have to have your action plan. And this is the most important. Because don't forget, we said reflective practice is all about improving. Improving. Auditing your service. Self-audit. That is what it is. Reflective practice is self-audit. So you are doing to improve. So at the end, if you don't have an action plan, then you'd have wasted time doing the description, the feeling, the evaluation, the analysis, and the conclusion. And so the action plan, you have to figure out what are you going to do differently. And even if things went, went well, and you answer that, even though it went well, it could have been done faster. It could have been done with less blood flowing out of the patient. It could have been done without the patient going into convulsion. It could have been done without the patient coming back. It could have been done without the family getting angry, even though it went well. So figure out what are you going to do differently the next time, based on everything that you have learned. For example, if you realize that things went badly because you made a certain mistake as a result of carelessness, then figure out how are you going to act in the future to make sure that you don't have that mistake again. And that is the action plan. Once you have the action plan, then you now re-experience. You put the improvement action plan into place. And this reflective practice is more, it should become like an ongoing attribute. It should become a daily routine for you. And you will see the magnificent benefits that it will bring to you. Then we have using self-distancing to help reflection, you know, and in this case, you can, instead of using yourself, you can ask, how will others have felt in the same situation? So you avoid using first person language. Don't use I. So instead of asking, what could I have done differently? Ask, what could you have done differently? Then you ask, do, do this, self-distancing by reflection, it helps you to take away the emotions. Because sometimes when it's about you, you feel that, oh, I didn't do well. But if you ask, what, as if there's somebody else, what would you, even though there's nobody there, what would you start saying, what would I? It, is, it helps in reducing the emotions. So this is a way that you can reduce your emotional, particularly when it, this is used when there's a bad situation. For example, unfortunately a patient dies and you are doing reflective practice as a team or as an individual. Sometimes then you use self-distancing. So you use you instead of I so that you don't feel guilty. And if you feel emotionally about it, you will not do proper reflection. Because reflection is supposed to be without emotion. Let me take it again. Reflection is supposed to be without emotions. Let me take it a third time. Reflection is supposed to be without emotions. So the self-distancing can be used where you feel emotionally attached to a situation that um, happened. And so this is another way to look at it. What, where, and who? So first of all, take note the situation. And when you, with this model, where you say the situation, what, where, and who? Think about the situation and the things that, what happened exactly and in what order? Take note. 
in what order? So you have to be systematic and know, note it in order. This first, this second, this third. Don't just jumble it up. Because each of the others will be reflected on to see how we could improve the before the operation, during the operation, or after the operation. Where were you at the time? In the theater. Where were you at the time? You know, in the community. Who else was involved? What part did you have to play? And what was the final outcome? So state the situation without emotions. State the situations exactly as it, it, it happened. So after the situation, what is the next? Your emotional states. Now you are going to document your emotional states. At this point, as you are documenting your emotional states, try to remove your emotions. You are just documenting. We want you to document exactly what happened rather than be involved at this moment, you know, and use that to document. So how did what happened, the situation, how did it make you feel? What was running through your, your mind? How did you feel about it? Be honest with yourself. Were you afraid? Were you confused? Were you angry? Were you scared? Were you unsure? Were you overconfident? Were you underconfident? If you can understand how you were feeling at that time, it will help you to put together why things happened the way they did. It will also help you to recognize similar situations in the future. So carefully note your emotions after the situations. So one, note down the situation. Two, your emotional states. Three, now make sense of the situation. Now you have thought about the situation in greater detail. And you probably recognize things that you would otherwise have gone unnoticed. Think about the way things happened as they did. How did the situation yourself and others interact? Think carefully about that. Did the situation go well? Or is there room? Was there room for improvement? Now make sense out of the situation. After you make sense out of the situation, it will help you in planning the going forward. Could you have done anything differently? With the help of hindsight, how would you have managed the situation differently? These are the questions to ask. What are the factors that could have influenced the way things went? It is easy to remember things that you did not after, but at that point you would not remember. So could you have done anything differently? That is a question that we have to ask. Then what will you now do differently in the future based on what you have stated that you could have done? How will this change your practice? So the essence of the reflective practice is that when the same kind of situation, when the same kind of case, when the same kind of a patient, the same kind of family come, you'll be able to do things better. So this is the most important stage in reflecting. And it's called, it's, if you look, it, it's the same as the action under Gibbs. When Gibbs talks of action, this is no, noting down how it will change your practice in future. You need to pull everything together and then learn and change your practice to improve. And then, after you improve, we have something we call reinforcement. And what happens when you put this into practice? So you do the reflection. Based on your reflective analysis, you put your action plan together. You implement the, the improvement that you want to put into place. When you actually do that, you now test your reflection. 
that this new things that we put in place has it actually enhanced my practice compare the situations again and see if the the activities and actions have improved so this is a chance to repeat the reflective cycle refine your actions and develop better understanding so my very very dear allied health professionals i believe you have accessed and referenced the sample sheet or the sample documentation sheet we are going to look at it uh, together so if you have not and you see that so now we are moving into the the, the, the practicals all the models that we have talked about gabe's after games, all the various other models, they are there for you. And there's no one way. Decide which one is best for you. And then apply it. So we are going to briefly look at two templates. You know, um, and so right in front of you, if you have clicked, you know, uh, we are repeating here at the top reflective practice template one that there is no right or wrong way to reflect on your practice different people learn in different ways and while one person may learn by reflecting on a positive outcome another may find it more useful to focus on a situation that they found challenging so look below we have provided some prompts this is only to help you as a template or task templates to add value to your own reflection. The reflections are yours. The reflections are to improve your professional ability as an allied health professional. And if you want to do the reflections as a team, then it's for the team. So the value addition is yours. And so relax and take your time and decide which of the templates you want to use. All right, so uh, when you look here, the first one says, what event or topic are you reflecting on? So you can do a chat like, just like this, you know. So give a brief description. You don't need to give all the details, but rather focus on the event itself. If you recall, just state exactly at that point, no emotions, you know, when you too broad a focus may make it difficult to give the topic the attention it needs. So remember to keep things confidential. In the next session or tomorrow, we'll look at ethics decision making. But here we are saying that all these things should be confidential because you are noting things that happen in the presence of patients. And so privacy is important, you know. So what event or topic are you reflecting on? Then after that, you go to, would you call this a positive or a challenging event? You see what we're talking about then? What feelings would you use to describe the event? Was, were you scared? Were you afraid? Were you confident? Were you unsure? Even when things go right, they can still be challenging. So the fact that the operation was successful does not mean that it was a positive. Perhaps there were challenging parts before the end. Think about the outcomes of this event and whether you feel they could have been improved. After that, the next one says, what happened? Give a brief description of the event. How do you respond? How did your team respond? How did you feel during the event? What did you feel after? So what happened? Then the next one is looking back. So now, after you've documented all that, you are, that you've done the analysis. Analysis means what did you feel and so on and so forth. What could have been done better? You know, then looking back, are you satisfied with how you responded? 
Are you satisfied with how things went? If not, document why not. Do you think you work effectively with your team? If not, what would help you to work better as a team member and as a team collective in the future? Did you have all the support you needed? If not, why not? What happened? Was it logistical support that didn't come at the right time? There was no gas? Is that what caused the, 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 the problem? There was no oxygen? The needles got broken? So it did all get all the support. If it is in a group, was the group satisfied with how it responded? And so on and so forth. So after you look back at the event, then what we always said, the action. Remember under gifts, action. The way forward, which is the most important because that is what you are going to activate to improve your work. So now looking forward, ask yourself, if there is a similar event in the future, would you do anything differently? What did you learn from this experience and your reflection on it? How will this learning improve your practice? How will this learning be used to the benefit of service users, particularly patients, their family? Are there any lessons to be learned by your team? The things you learned after this event help you to achieve so now you are going forward into action. And at the end, we have other support. We know that reflection is not a one-off activity. I'm going to say that maybe three or four or five times. Reflection, and that is why we treated attributes. So you are not reflecting because the, C, the CPD says we should reflect. You are reflecting because you see the essence and the benefits of it and it's going to, so it's not a one-off activity. You would have to take it as a continuous process. And so you will continue after that. And then uh, just a small reminder, when you are in groups, group reflection, as we said, or team reflection can be relatively informal or unstructured. Now the approach you should that you use to suit your team, you know your team, you know your group. So it should make everyone comfortable. Not everyone in every team is comfortable with frank discussions. So you should know your team and even after a session, reflective session by the group, Everyone should know that they are welcome to bring new ideas. And finally, it's important to think about the, the leadership of the group, the power dynamics, and try to manage them. So this is a template number one that now we have given you a structure that you can actually use. But by all means, go back on the slides and look at Gibbs, look at all the others, and you can also design your own templates. You can also design templates for particular situations. Listen carefully. You can design templates for particular situations. Templates for situations where there's an operation. Templates for a situation where you are only meeting uh, clients. Templates for where you have a case, uh, case uh, uh, study, etc. So that is that. Now there's a, a simpler or a second template, which would seem you know, relatively simple. And that is just talking about the, 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 the famous five W's and H and so what? Five W's and H and so what? That is what it is called. The five W's and H and so what? So in this relatively simpler uh, template, number two, you just take when. 
you state when and the date and the time you know where in the theater where in the community where in the doctor's room where in the client's house where are the okay so and then you ask what so now you describe what happened how did it happen how did it happen who were involved why why did it happen so when you have all these the when the where the what the how the who and the why and then you now the and so what is then the action plan and therefore we are going to do this differently we are going to do this differently we are going to do this differently the next time and so that is two reflective templates which we would want you to use as you do your um, your, your your next assignment so now you have all the various things all the various methods and approaches and now you have two templates that you will be required to use good so we have so much material now and i can sense that you are or we all are becoming reflective practitioners I can sense that we are all going to look at the attributes. I can sense that we are all going to decide to use the various models, the various kinds of ways to do reflective practice. And just before this, we now have given ourselves at least two templates that you can actually use to document. And so if all that we have done in the past um, has been taken into our minds and our hearts, then we then will be ready for our practice assignment three. So with this practice assignment three, what we are saying is that use any of the models discussed and we've discussed so many games and others, you know, you, and you, you can always go back, go back, go back, you know, and use any of the models discussed to document. So now we want you to enter into the practice to document a reflection process. Take note of this, not just any reflection process, but a reflection process for yourself. So we are taking from the lens of self. Remember the lenses. The lenses of the patient, the lens of self, lens of the family, lens of, the, of your institution. So use the lens of self. Use any of the models discussed to document a reflection process for yourself based on the instances or the situations or the cases that you selected in your practice assignment one. Do you remember? I'm sure you, you, you all remember. So you now you see the essence of that practice assignment one. So we'll go back. You can you can it, you can re having come this far. You can you can restate. The, the, the instance or the situation or the case. You can change it. But from that practice assignment one, that instance throughout the year, one challenging and one positive. Now you based on that, use any of the models and document a reflective practice process. That is your practice assignment three. And so we want to, um, you would want to do that, you know, later on. And um, um, it is something you would do 
and then you present uh, later on. You know, us, the, uh, the organizers would, uh, at the end of the session, would instruct you to do, you know. So now we want to start moving to the end of, of this session. Having learned what reflective practices, having learned the types and the modes, reflect on, reflect in, anticipatory, having known the attributes of someone who wants to. So it's not a force, somebody who wants to be a reflective practitioner, the attributes. Having seen the various types and options that you have in documenting and practicing the reflective uh, process. And also now having shown the documentation, at least two templates that you can use or you can modify to suit yourself in any way. We have said over and over again, there is no one way. There is no one correct way of documenting and practicing reflective practice. It is something that would depend on the situation, would depend on you, would depend on the lens that you are using. And so, at this point, we just want to look quickly, run through some of the positive outcomes. Some, some may call benefits, outcomes, you know, why? So that we want to now convince ourselves why it is important, you know. And so, we know that the reflective practice has impact on your personal and continuous professional uh, development, which is like what we are doing now, CPDs. And then it also has some kind of impact on your clients or patients. And if it has positive, as you continuously do reflective practice, and it has positive impact on your clients or your patients, then it will have an impact on their families, to have in fact a positive impact on your organization, more patients will come. More patients will be, want, will be, will be happy to come back to you. They, they will get recommendations from, from those who have visited because of your reflective practice. And therefore, clinical outcomes will be also enhanced. Clinical performance would be improved. So we want to quickly, at this stage, just run through as many of these situations as we see, you know, and as you can see for your professional development. Okay, so continuous professional development is a fundamental part of allied, allied health professionals' career. The council is very strong on that and you have to gain your points. So it, it helps you to improve your ability at your workplace it helps you to improve your professional competence. Now, when your professional competence is, is improved, obviously your career prospects, even if you are moving from one place to another, you are moving from here out of the jurisdiction of Ghana, and you document as part of your CV that you are a practitioner of reflective practice, it will make your CV very positive. It also makes you yourself happy. It will increase your job satisfaction. You know. And then you know that reflect is the process by which you can analyze your CPD activities. You can also reflective practice on your CPD activities. Hear me, what I'm saying is that the reflective practice is not only on your work but even your CPD activities throughout the year, reflect on it. Assess the benefits of the activities to yourself and to the, 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 the patients. The CPD activities for the year. Make sure that you, after each of the CPDs, ask yourself a series of practical questions to determine the outcome of your CPD. Ask yourself, what and how have I gained from this particular CPD? Was this activity beneficial? Whether it was a CPD or a lecture, whether it was a community program, whether it was a workshop, 
you ask yourself, has it been beneficial to my professional development? How will this impact my professional practice? So you don't just do the CPDs and let them pass, let them pass. Oh, they said we should do. The council requires that we should do. From now, move to appreciate the CPDs. Move to do as many more continuous professional developments, knowing that the benefit comes to you first. Then, as it, it benefits your, 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 your performance, improves your performance, it benefits the patient. As it benefits the patient, it benefits your institution. Because your institution will become a place of class, of success, continuous success. So your, 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 your reflection on your CPDs is also important. Ask yourself, have you acquired any extra skills? And document it. The skills that you have acquired. Are there any still gaps that the CPDs for 2023 did not uh, did not uh, um, did not fulfill? Then you can then plan outside the standard CPDs to do many more things that will fill uh, that gap. So a suitable CPDs will help you to track your, your personal uh, progress, you know. So this is what, you know, find out which activities have been most, most beneficial, what have I achieved, have there been any changes in emerging specialism, technology? Ask yourself. It should not only be about just, okay, I just want the points, the points, the points, without letting the CPDs improve yourself. Is there a new technology in eye care? Is there a new technology in anesthesia? Is there new ideas? Are there new laws? All these things are integrated part of your CPDs, not just as it were looking for the points. I'm stressing that carefully. And therefore, reflective practice is to help you that from now onwards, be very interested in a lot of CPDs. Okay? And so on and so forth. What activities do I need to undertake within 2024, the next 12 months? Write down any ideas, feelings, and observations, and how effective, and preferably not as a year-end task. And so, this is a picture that I want you to reflect upon. Deep reflection. This is the position. Reflective practice. Think within, think out, think of the various ways and make it an integrated part of your professional development, not only to get the points for the council, as it were. And then once now you do that for your own personal progress. This is a very nice statement that I want you to look at. He says, learning new techniques for your professional work is like the fish that provides a meal for you for today. Look at that. Learning new techniques for your professional work is like the fish that provides a meal for you today.